All right guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a little bit different type of video today. This is my favorite club in the bag and I have learned how to hit this club very, very far. The reason that I've been able to hit this club pretty far is because I've learned how to swing it efficiently and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that today. So I'm not a very big person. I'm five foot eight, I'm 175 pounds on most days. Um, and I've just learned how to create efficiency through using the ground and a couple other things. And today I'm gonna give you guys four tips on how to hit your driver farther because who doesn't wanna hit their driver farther? So these four things that I think about when I'm hitting my driver, number one is how to use the ground more efficiently. Number two is where speed is created. Number three is setup, and number four is grip pressure. So we're gonna go through those four things and I promise you're gonna be able to hit your driver farther and straighter and your friends are gonna be like, dude, what is going on? Using the ground efficiently. So I'm gonna create a bit of an analogy here on what it means to use the ground efficiently. So think about if you were to jump right here, right now. If I'm, if I'm gonna jump from this position right here, I'm literally not, I'm not gonna be able to, like I'm not getting any height, I'm getting like one inch off the ground. Now think about if you were to jump from this position right here. So if you jump from here, obviously you're gonna be able to explode and jump a lot higher. Now, if you notice in my swing, whenever I take my back swing at the top, there's this moment where I'm in this position right here. And from there, I'm essentially jumping, I'm pushing off the ground, and that is one of the biggest components when it comes to speed. So you gotta think about it like this, at the top, you're thinking that you're, I mean, obviously you're not down here, but you're in a kind of a squatted position and then you're jumping, you're pushing off the ground and rotating. What that looks like, and there was a little bit of analogy, but I'm gonna go through it a little bit of a slow motion type of swing here. Imagine I take a, a swing right here and I'm just, I'm staying up here. From that position, I can use the ground a little bit, but I can't use it as efficiently as if my legs are a little bit flexed and I'm in this position here. Now I can, I have more distance to travel up and get away from the ball and use the ground efficiently. And a lot of people when they swing, they're just swinging their upper, with their upper body and trying to create speed like that. You have to use the ground if you wanna hit it farther. Let me hit one and you guys will be able to see this little squatting motion. And then you pay attention to my feet as I swing right here. You're gonna see this heel, this foot drive into the ground on my downswing and this foot is doing the same thing. It's pushing off and they're, they're both pushing in a way. And that was just a beautiful little fade. And you can tell that I'm pushing into the ground. And if I were to hit about 20 to 25 balls, you would actually start to see a little bit like of an indention, an impression into the ground from both of my feet. Because the harder you push, the more speed you're gonna be able to create. So that's how to use the ground efficiently. And now I'm going to move on to the second point, which is where speed is created. This is something that for most people who hit driver, um, I feel like this is just a little bit of a cheat code where you're instantly gonna be able to add more speed to your swing. So I see a lot of people, they get to the top of their swing and they literally are trying to swing so hard from the top. And some people I see even in the comments and you know people who, watch, who see me hit drivers in, in real life and they're like, it just doesn't look like you're swinging that hard. I am swinging hard, but what I'm not doing is swinging hard from the top. So when I get to the top, I'm making sure that I get a nice set and then all of my speed is created on the downswing from right here to right here. The reason that you don't need to swing hard from the top is because what you're trying to do is you're trying to be the fastest speed at the bottom. And when you try to swing hard from the top, so I'm thinking slow at the top and fast at the bottom. How I do that is in my hands and my arms. So obviously this is all combined together with the ground. But when I get here and here, then from there, I am releasing my hands as quickly as I can. Think about it like a bullwhip. When you, when you go to, to, to make a bullwhip crack, it's you're waiting on it, waiting on it, and then right at the end, you're snapping it. So it's essentially the same thing. You're waiting on it, you're waiting on it, and right at the end, you're snapping it. And you'll actually be able to, once you, once you visualize that, you'll be able to see that in the swing. I'm slower at the top. All my speed is coming from the bottom. There'll be a, a front view of the swing here that's gonna kind of explain that.
And that right there is the perfect example of where speed is created. I'm not swinging hard from the top. I'm letting everything snap from here to the, through the, right through the ball. Speed is created at the bottom, not the top. Now we've been through one and two, we're on to number three, setup. I'm gonna go through a couple quick key points when it comes to setup, and, and I'm also gonna let you guys know kind of some errors that I see a lot of people make when it comes to setup and how to fix those. So from down the line, you, you have to, you don't really ever wanna be thinking you wanna hit a straight ball with your driver. That's really hard for your brain to do. So you either wanna be curving it, curving it from left to right or right to left, which is a draw for a right-handed player. For me, I like hitting fades, so I'm always, I'm always set up, aim left in my target because I really just, a fade feels most comfortable for me, so I feel like I can work something back to the target. And a very important thing with driver is that everything is square. So feet, knees, shoulders, and arms. And when I, what I mean by arms is sometimes you'll see that from this downline angle, this left arm, <laughs> this right arm will get a little bit high. And when that gets high, then I'm creating a not square pattern. So now, like relative to my club face, my arms are aiming way, 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 way left. And then when your arms get left, your shoulders get left, it's just, it creates a lot of, you're going to spin the ball a lot from that position. So for me, I'm always picking a start line. And then I am setting up my club face perfectly square to that start line. And then my body is just slightly open to that start line. So I'm going to get a club and lay it on the ground so I can give you guys a visual. As we go into setup, this is what it should look like. This is what I feel. It's not necessarily for everyone, but this is what I feel when I'm setting up with the driver. So this is my start line, just to make sure I'm computing here. My start line is just about five yards left of those flags. And I want this ball to end essentially on that far bunker. that's about 10 yards right of the flag. So I'm hitting a little baby fade. So as I'm walking in and I'm setting up, I usually start with my feet just a little bit closer together to make sure that I can get a feel for my ball position. I like my ball position about one ball back inside that left heel. So it's about right there. And then I have a nice wide stance. I feel like that really helps me get connected lower, lower to the ground. And then from that position, making sure that my shoulders are square, my feet and hips are square because I have a nice little alignment stick there. And then you make, I, I always gotta make sure that this arm doesn't get too high that causes my shoulders to open, so it's this arm's lowered and also square with that target line. And then from there, I can just make a big turn and swing left and hit it as hard as I can. And that is perfect. And why I think that being square is so important is as soon as I, you know, get the shoulders open or get this arm high or your feet are closed or open, the synchronicity of my swing gets off by a lot. And it just causes me to start spinning the ball a lot. So practice with an alignment stick, one this way. And if you have another one, put it this way for your ball position, create a setup that you can repeat. And I guarantee that's gonna start, that you're gonna start hitting it straighter and farther and be more confident with your driver. Hopefully this is gonna make a very large difference and make your program a lot bigger. The last one is grip pressure and there is really not much to say here other than uh, another analogy from TIG. So I learned this from Bob Rotella a very, very long time ago. Imagine that when you're holding your grip, you are gripping it so that you're holding a baby bird. I don't know for a fact, but I'm pretty sure baby birds are pretty sensitive when they first pop out of an egg. What I want you to think about throughout the entire swing is your grip pressure is staying so so light that you're still able to hold on the club, but you're not strangling it. Make a couple swings with a starting grip pressure of three out of 10, 10 being like a white knuckle approach to where you're just squeezing the heck out of it. And then one is obviously letting go of the club. So a three out of 10, make a couple swings and you will notice instantly that your grip pressure is actually changing throughout your swing. What you gotta focus on is keeping your grip pressure at a three to four out of 10 the whole entire swing. And that is gonna allow your, one, your arms to be able to move more freely and your hands to be able to release the face in order to be able to square it up. So super simple, literally just start. You can make a couple swings and you'll notice that 
at the end of your swing, your, your grip pressure is probably a lot tighter than it was at the beginning. All right, so that is it. You guys have seen the four points on how I hit my driver farther, how I've learned how to create speed by using the ground, by learning where speed is created, by setup, and then by grip pressure. And it's, it's pretty simple. So um, do these things. Hopefully this uh, improves your driving, improves your consistency off the tee. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you want to see more little snippets of, of how I swing a golf club. I'm not a teaching professional. I don't have any license or anything. I have just, you know, honestly, I started on YouTube. Like that's where I first learned how to swing a golf club. And so I kind of taught myself. And now I do have a, an incredible coach, but these are just things that I've learned over the years. So let me know if you want to see more and uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the support. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on the way to half a million, which is just insane, but love you guys. Peace.